try to address the challenge of, uh, of finding catalysts for fuel cells that can uh, achieve the job of uh, producing power from fuel cells but have low cost. And the conventional catalysts that are used are, are based on precious metals, uh, platinum, ruthenium, palladium, and, and the like. And those catalysts are extremely expensive. You, you, you make jewelry from those types of materials, and so the catalysts themselves can also be extremely expensive. And one of the real barriers for uh, the putting fuel cells into the market is to bring the cost down so that, for example, a, an automotive fuel cell is competitive in terms of cost with an uh, internal combustion engine. So, so we focus primarily on fuel cells. Uh, fuel cells are electrochemical devices that convert uh, a fuel, which could be hydrogen, it could be methanol, it could be glucose, uh, to electricity. Uh, it's similar to a battery in that it converts a chemical energy to electrical energy, but it differs from a battery in that instead of having to recharge the battery or throw it away, we can simply replace the fuel supply, refill the tank, and the fuel cell will continue to run. And because of that, um, generally speaking, fuel cells have higher um, power per unit mass than batteries. And that's important in cars because we want to minimize the, 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 the weight of the car to increase the, the efficiency. So, uh, so fuel cells um, in the long term have a, 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 a very promising future in the automotive industry and possibly also in like, the electronics industry because, again, the amount of energy per unit mass that you can carry around with you with a fuel cell is a lot higher than you can get with a, with a battery. Uh, in the near term, there's a lot of challenges with fuel cells, primarily uh, w where to get the fuel. Uh, with a battery, if you have a rechargeable battery, you can always just plug it in. With a fuel cell, you have to find the fuel somewhere. And hydrogen, um, there's maybe 20 or 30 hydrogen refueling stations in the world right now. Uh, and methanol, for example, um, is going to be probably a, a, a standard fuel for portable fuel cells. But again, it's, it's not very easy to find methanol in a store. So there's a, those infrastructural barriers are something that need to be overcome for fuel cells to be viable. Uh, the durability issue I already mentioned it has to be overcome for fuel cells to be viable. But most importantly, the cost of fuel cells has to come down to the point where it's competitive with internal combustion, uh, with um, conventional batteries, uh, lithium batteries, for example. Um, so that we can actually use these devices in cars and in other applications. Fuel cells are a realistically a long-term project. Uh, I think there are um, great advantages to fuel cells in terms of uh, being able to refuel a, a vehicle or a device quickly, as a, which is something that you really can't do with batteries. Uh, but there's also great disadvantages in terms of where you find the fuel, and most importantly in terms of cost. And so we're really uh, trying to drive down the cost to make this technology accessible to, uh, to, to average consumers and to really make this a, a, um, a device that is practical to put in uh, you know, large-scale manufacturing processes.